we saw yesterday desire or will is our first power the basic power that we all have we all possess now the second power is knowledge now knowledge is not just information when we hear knowledge what comes to our mind is information knowing the stuff this and that and you know reading from the books practical knowledge and theoretical knowledge this is what we think as knowledge it is a tiny part of knowledge not the whole knowledge information you find even in the computer in the books but does the computer has the power of knowledge does it have awareness even machines with artificial intelligence is all programmed it doesn't have that awareness that a human being has it's not the same knowledge is the second power now after this talk if you go back home thinking you have learned something that will be the worst thing even you are sitting at home and you are thinking you are learning something i tell you no i am not here to stuff information into your head it is the awakening which we call knowledge you know in sanskrit uh, there are two words one is shiksha another is diksha shiksha is learning skills the word skill has come from word shiksha actually it involves information experience and all that but diksha is something totally different diksha is that which removes ignorance and that which frees you from impurities and there are three levels of impurities one is the physical impurities in the body body mind complex second is vikshepa now let's come to physical impurity suppose you have not had a good night sleep your mind is all in cluttered the next day you don't perceive things properly and suppose if there is an imbalance in your vata pitta and kapha there is some chemical imbalance in your body you start hallucinating and your perception is blurred so you need to be in a healthy condition in order to perceive things better for knowledge to manifest we must have healthy system so that is mala mala means unhealthy uh, or unhealthy uh, impure system so diksha is something that removes this reduces this second is vikshepa vikshepa means mental agony see someone has some trouble or imaginary difficulties that they that they cultivate in themselves and then you know they are not ready to listen to anything have you experienced people like that even you might have gone through such stage when your mind is so disturbed nothing makes sense to you no sensible wisdom or word could be grasped and it happens with you and with others also when you calm down after some time when this agitation in the mind is calm then sense prevails any time the mind is agitated your sensibility goes way down isn't it so vikshepa and then avarna avarna is veil a certain veil on the being on your consciousness so by one effort you can do these two things what is that mala you can purify the system your body take healthy food do proper exercise yoga this all what can do and keep good company vikshepa the agitation in the mind can be done away with by wisdom by seeing life from a broader perspective and looking at the cause of the disturbance why we are disturbed what is that we are worrying about you know these questions when we ask ourselves 
a lot of clutter in our mind gets dissolved. But the third thing, the veil on our being happens only through, through blessings, grace, to good company, these things. So, Diksha is that which provides all these, which gives you an opportunity. And Diksha again happens in three levels. One is just in the presence, the vibrations. You find a different vibration taking over. You feel very good about it. Vibrations. Second is through mantra. And Sahaj Samadhi, when you take, that is like Diksha. You know, you take Sahaj Samadhi uh, initiation and you do meditation, the mantra Diksha. And the third is that sense of deep connectivity to the infinite consciousness, to the divinity. That's the third level. You feel total oneness or surrender, you can say. In usually in the religious time, you say, I have surrendered to the divinity. That sense of service, sense of belongingness, all this uh, is the third level of Diksha. So, only when we have both Shiksha and Diksha, the two aspects, your knowledge is complete, is full. Yeah? Such knowledge is power. The saying in English, the ignorance is bliss, it to some extent may be correct, but ignorance is really our weakness. Here again I am reminding knowledge is not just information, it is the level of our awareness, it's quality of our consciousness, and that is the strength, you know. Then there is knowledge in us as a power, nothing can shake us, nothing can take the joy away from us. And it's the knowledge or wisdom that is also associated with beauty. Real beauty is not in physical appearance. The charm is always in the consciousness, and the consciousness is knowledgeable. Again, here, not information, the consciousness is aware, awake, the awakened consciousness, awakened mind of yours is what exuberates beauty. It's the intelligence which adds to the beauty. You know, someone looks good physically, but they're so dull, they have no brains. You know, you don't consider that to be beauty, isn't it? That beauty, it's not something that uplifts, elevates. So, this beauty of consciousness is inherent in the knowledge, in awareness. So, are we aware? See, when you say, I don't know, that means you know that you don't know. That is knowledge. Knowing that you don't know is also knowledge. Do you see what I'm saying? Knowledge or information and lack of it, both is part of wisdom, part of knowledge. When you realize that I don't know, when you realize the ignorance, that is also knowledge. And that brings suppleness in your consciousness, humility in your consciousness. That brings a sense of beauty. Just look back when you were a child. You know, what was the state of your mind? Your purview of operation or your purview of your life was very different, isn't it? It was all very limited. Your interactions were limited, your informations were limited. And so your world was very small. On the other hand, as you grew up, you got a lot of information. Your world has grown bigger, right? And notice the state of your mind, your consciousness. The more you know, the more when you acknowledge what remains to be known is much more, it changes the quality of your consciousness. It is supple, it is humble, there is a humility. But if you think, I know it all, and you go with this attitude, I know it all, that is the beginning of death of consciousness. That's when you start closing down 
and you start becoming very hard inside. You are not open to knowing, right? The openness comes with the awareness of ignorance. And this is part of knowledge. At the same time, when you are confirmed about certain things that you know, that conviction you have, yeah, I know this for sure. Suppose someone tells you, you know how to drive the car, yes, I know. You know how to cook food, you say, you, I know. That knowing on one hand creates certain conviction in you. Life needs this conviction of knowing. At the same time, life also needs the awareness of I don't know. This I don't know state of mind is the other flip side of I know it. You know that confidence. I know brings confidence. I don't know brings openness in us. We need to simultaneously develop these two aspects. If it happens, that is the power of wisdom. That's the power of knowledge. If you see the ancient uh, traditions in India, or gods, goddesses, they all have snakes. Snake is associated with divinity. Unlike in the West, the snake is a Satan who tried to tempt you. In the East, snake is always associated with divinity. Why? Because snake is a symbol of awareness, alertness. You know, you will find five hooded snakes, six hooded snakes. A snake indicates you are conscious, you are mindful of doing anything you are doing. There is mindfulness, there is awareness. Awareness is wisdom, is knowledge, not just information. Information is just a tiny part of it, very tiny part of it. So the quality of our life depends on the amount of knowledge we have. It depends on the quality of our consciousness. Life is a journey where we acquire knowledge, where we blossom and we utilize this knowledge in our life to move towards its ultimate destination. In fact, there is no ultimate destination. Every step is ultimate. But for understanding sake, we have to say that. Because life, when you wake up, when you are fully awake from within, you see you are already there. But for a seeker, we have to use, because language is very limited. We have said, this is a journey. In journey, acquiring knowledge is essential. Again, here acquiring does not mean you read a lot of books or listen to a lot of knowledge. Just drop and just be. And you will see infinity is synonymous with knowledge. In the Sanskrit uh, saying it is a satyam jnana manantam brahma. Truth, knowledge and infinity are synonymous. One word for all of them. Or all these words indicate one thing, that is vastness, infinity. Knowledge should keep all possibilities open in front of you. And wisdom should lead you from an ignorant, I don't know, I don't know. You know, when you are upset, you say, I don't know. Even if you know, you simply, I don't know. From that ugly, I don't know, to a beautiful, I don't know. You ask any scientist, anyone who has achieved the peak in their field, they'll only say, well, I don't know. Perhaps there is much more than what we know. This quality in your consciousness is very, very important because that invokes the beauty in you. Why children are so beautiful? You know, because they have that innocence. They say, I don't know. See? And it is not that ignorant, I don't know, or ugly, I don't know where you are in a state of inertia. You are aware that you don't know. 
at the same time as I said earlier the flip side of it anything you know you know for sure this is it a confirmation huh? there is conviction there is confirmed it's totally opposite they're totally different state but if you both of them in one place if they are united if they are realized that is the true power that we all have Jnana Shakti it Sanskrit is called Jnana Shakti the power of wisdom power of wisdom now I would like you to make a list of things all that you know and make another list of things all that you don't know now whatever you think you don't know at least you know that you don't know about it right and whatever you really don't know you don't even know that you don't know that it's very subtle you know you can say I don't know how to cook that means you know something about cooking I don't know how many planets are there that means you know there are planets right what you really don't know you don't even know that you don't know it our consciousness is such an amazing amazing field to explore you are such an amazing stuff to be known because you don't know yourself in the Upanishad it is said you know one who say, claims that he knows the Brahman does not know and one who says I don't know he knows it says if you say I don't know that means you know it and one who says I know it he doesn't know it this is very interesting I mean if you ponder on it you can go deep and deep and you know it just uplifts your consciousness beyond vocabulary beyond explanation beyond understanding even they didn't give a name to that that's why it said that thou art that what is that better not to give a name the moment you give a name you label it and you think you know it and once you think you know it that's it that's the end of knowing further you you are stuck in a paradigm paradigm shifts are possible only when you accept and acknowledge the possibility all possibilities we have to go beyond the paradigms and that's why it's better not to give a name to it the moment you give a name you already make it an object of knowing and whatever you know is much smaller than the knower knower has the power and that power is knowledge just keep it that not to give it a name you say God, you say this, you get Atman, you say Brahman, you say something then your mind is very quick to pounce on it and put it in a box label it very quickly we are walking around with labels in our pocket and we try to label it, see how you label people this man good man, this man bad, this man like this, that guy is like this, this lady is this way judgmental mind is detrimental to wisdom that's why it has been said no judge not don't judge others so you will be judged judging is like confining the infinite power try to confine it that's not possible try to confine the infinite power into a small hole So our consciousness has many functions. The intellect is one, memory, and then the mind that which perceives. Then they use pragya, heightened awareness. These are all different aspects of our consciousness, or functions of our consciousness. You see? It's fascinating, it's amazing to see the depth of study that has gone into this field and there is more to explore and again these are not just information you stop 
meditation. Meditation is the way. The meditation which heightens your awareness. Agni Putra Shri Ananda Murti Sharavana Bhava